Good day subscribers and welcome to the Off The Cuff YouTube channel. Our guest today is a Banyana Banyana goalkeeper who has participated in the Olympic Games and two World Cups. Please join me in welcoming Kaylin Swart. Thanks for having me. Jeez, you guys should have warned me that Joey was going to be in here. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Yeah, welcome. Kaylin Kristen Swart. How do you like that for a tomato? Jeez, you say it so well. Yeah, my first question is, my first question is, do I have a chance with Robin Moodley? Uh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> that's, a, that's an inside joke. The people don't know who's Robin Moodley. Uh, maybe they do, yeah. maybe they do, I don't know. Maybe I, they I do. Know. You never maybe know. Maybe they do. Okay, so, so, so tell me about Sadie. Who said it? Oh, okay, it's fine. <laughs> like, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> you are terrible. <laughs> uh, that's a great start. You know, um, so I've been doing the series where I interview people from Govendale. And okay. um and only in South Africa, actually I, it's very rare. I don't think there's any other place in the entire world where the female goalkeeper and the male goalkeeper stayed a couple of streets away from each other in the same neighborhood. Yeah, that's right. That's actually a pretty good observation. Because um, not a lot of people know that. And, yeah. uh, you know, we all, both of us grew up in the same environment. We all had, we both had the same factors that could have um, hindered our, you know, our success or, the, or our career. But, I mean, if you think about it, we both came out strong, which is probably the most amazing thing about it because um, seeing that the environment we were in was not the greatest, but look where we are now, you know. And it's awesome to say that both of us come from the same town, you know. So, more or less, you, you like, had the same journey, more or less. Because yeah, you yeah. went, yeah, you, can, you, you also went to Parkside Primary, right? Yes, that's right. So tell me about the teachers that influenced you at Parkside Primary in your development. Uh, yeah, well, there's, there's quite a few. Um, you know, Wendell Naidu is a big influence in um, my development because he literally saw me and he was like, listen, I don't care if you're the only girl in the team, you're going to play, you know. So he never pushed me aside. He never said, no, you're not. So he, he definitely, because I started playing in primary school. So that's where I started. And um, so, yeah, my, the teachers were a great help because they never saw me as a girl. They saw me as a athlete, you know? So oh. that, def that definitely helped me a lot. You know, they weren't like, oh, she's a girl. She can't play. They're like, oh, she's got skills. So she will play, you know, that type of mentality so and I but I never really it never really bothered me that I was the only girl I was like come I'm gonna play I'm gonna show you now, I always had that like I can beat you attitude you know so <laughs> you know that attitude that attitude is consistent and common with all the guys that I interviewed um Ashford Prince, Dane Clayton, uh Yavdiro Peterson all the guys um, Bronwyn, um, that I interviewed, they had that um, drive that I want to be better than you, but in a good way. Yeah. I want to yeah. know, yeah, I want to know, because it's mostly Calvindale people, like Yarwe van Rierden, Wayne Panyal, like the PE people. So I want to know, uh, where does that come from? In, like for you, where does that come from, that mentality? I think I was always, my dad always instilled, you know, the never give up mentality and always pushing for what you want, you know. So I always thought, um, I like I always, growing up, I, I knew I wanted to play professionally or, you know, go to the highest level possible. But it was never until I got to high school is when everything really like, you know, set in my mind and 
said, okay, this is what I want to do. But I think definitely my family, because my dad, obviously, he was very strict with me. So he instilled a lot of my values and my morals and how I, um, you know, progress through life and how I see things. Because um, I could easily have given up because in the environment, there, was, there wasn't much exposure, you know. So um, it was easy. I could have easily given up and said, no, this is not for me. But because of my dad, and my uncles, you know, they all pushed me to be where I am today and made me, I think my dad made me the person I am today. So that's another common thread. The common thread is all the guys that I interviewed from Govendale spoke about how important family was yeah. and how important, yeah, and how important the grounding family gives you and how important the support of the community and the family is for you to succeed. Do you think that right now um, we still have that in our communities, in specifically Galvin? I think it's, uh, it's not as prominent as it, as, it, as it was back then, you know? I think now the mentality is all about um, what I can show, you know, it's not what I can give back. So it's it's more of I want to be better than you, but I don't want you to be better, you know. Like I I want to do good, no. but you can't be better type of thing. I think I think I think it's the one thing also is that hard work plays a a, a, a huge role, and I think what's happening in our communities is we want it easy. So because yes. you yeah. achieved what you achieved, people think it's easy because easy, you achieved yeah. it. Ah, it's, it's easy, no, but they don't not. know. You're right. They don't know the hard work that you put in. So they don't know that behind the scenes, um, although you had the talent, you still had to work hard because you were athlete, because you were good at cricket as well. What were you yes. better at, cricket or soccer? I... <laughs> I think I was, I think technically I was better at soccer, but um, with cricket was more of, it just came naturally, I think, you know, and, um, but if I had to go back, I wish I could have done both, you know, because there's times where I really miss playing cricket and then there's days where I'm like, oh, maybe I should have, you know. So there's always like, I'm always in two minds about it, but, um, but soccer was my first love. So I think I was, I was always going to choose football, you know, so, um, but yeah. I think, I think it's possible for you to play cricket and soccer. I think it's possible. I think that you guys from Galvindale have this gene that no other <laughs> color person have. That I swear you have those genes. There's this gene in Galvindale in the water there that no other colored township have because Galvindale produced the most colored Springboks, South African soccer players, um, female soccer sports people per square yeah. meter in no, the entire guys, world. Yeah. In the entire world, it's not like it's not like level in the in world. It's like in the world. So I, I did some research. Maybe Liverpool produced um, players, soccer players, but they didn't produce cricket players. Uh, yeah. Maybe um, Sydney produced. So, so I mean, just by that 50 square kilometer. Because after Parklands Primary, you went to Galvin. Galvin, not um, what, Galvindale High. Where did you no, go to? So, St. Thomas, man. You went yeah, to St. So Thomas. From, so from Parkside Primary, I went to St. Thomas, yes. Okay. Okay, so St. Thomas yeah. is where um, Ashwell Prince went, but he's older than you. He's like, wait. Yes, older. that's like, right. That's he, right. Yeah. Yeah, you can be you're like. You can be. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're right, because there's so many, so many of them that are in the, that were in the Proteus that are just as good at soccer as they are at cricket. And us that play soccer, we could play cricket too. So it's actually, it's pretty crazy if you think about it. It is. Like Dane, I played cricket with Dane. I played with him a couple of games. He's blazing. Um, Pani in soccer is blazing. Uh, uh, um, Ashul in soccer is blazing. It's like, yo, 
these guys they can play so <laughs> after after st thomas who was an influence at st thomas for you um at st thomas was definitely i mean my uncle uncle gary mayer was he was a teacher while, oh, wow while I that's was, your uncle yes yes Wait, is gary mayer your uncle yeah yo yo okay continue yeah. okay i understand now yeah I was there, he was still teaching there. So I think he definitely kept me on the right path, you know. But I wasn't really involved with St. Thomas, like with soccer. I was playing more cricket at in high school and um, I played some volleyball and I did athletics. So soccer was more for, with a club, with Glenville Celtic Football Club. Yeah, tell us so, about that. Tell us about Glenville Celtic. That's in um, um, Gazelle Street, ne? Is that in Gazelle Street? No, that's that's in Galvandale, but it's a local club in Galvandale that plays at the Galvan Grounds, you know. So, okay. um, yeah, so I started there when I was about five, because um, that's when I, my dad was like, do you want to play? So I was like, yeah. So then that's the first club I went to. So I was there up until 15. So basically all I grew up in that club. Um, so yeah, I started there when I was five or six and um, I, th I was the only girl up until when I left, when I, was, when I left for high school, I was still the only girl. So um, that was never when, a problem. Did you play, um, were you always goalkeeper? No, funny enough. You, you, no. you were always... Oh, this <laughs> No, funny enough, I, when I started out. Oh. So, sorry, sorry, guys. I'm doing it. Funny, no, it's fine. Go, go, Tish. Go, you guys go, Tish. Okay, then. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, being a, being a single father is a bit difficult, by the way. <laughs> you got it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry about that. I want to know, um, were you always a goalkeeper? No, that's a funny story because um, I was a striker. I, I loved scoring goals. Um, and then I went to midfield. I played defender. So I basically played every position. Um, and then? I think, so when I started under 13, is when my dad asked me if I would try to be a goalkeeper. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll try it and see what, you know. So I think it was one or two games I was a goalkeeper. Then I was like, no, this is boring. But then when I went to my first training session as a goalkeeper, then I was like, wait, this is like, this is like a thrill. There's, you know, you can win games for your team. So I think it was more about like, uh, what I could give to a t to the team, you know, because I think that also be that was also natural, you know, because with my dad, he basically taught me how to be a goalkeeper. Mm. And oh, what well, the, this is uh, another thing that I also realized now is that all the people that I interviewed were team players, so the team seemed more important to their individual brilliance. Um, 100%. Yeah, I want to know, is that, is that also in assault? In, is that in assault <laughs> in Calendale? No, I, don't, I think it's just, you know, not everyone's born with the same mindset, right? But you can yeah, develop but, your own mindset. Yeah, but most of the people from Galvin that I, is born with that mindset. And I, I can't put my finger on it. I promise you. At the end of all these interviews, I'm going to write, I'm going to do a docu and write a book about that. So I just want to know. <laughs> I promise you. It's like, so, 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 so tell us uh, when you were at St. Thomas and yeah. uh, um, Uncle Mr. Mayor, he helped you. Then what happened after that? So, you didn't when I. Whole no. So towards the end of my grade eight year, um, I was at a tournament with, with boys and one of the scouts came over to me and we were like, what am, why am I here? Why am I playing with boys? I should be in a girls team, you know? And yeah. I was like, oh, 
well, but there's not many girls that play here in Port Elizabeth. And um, so then he asked me what what if I if he like proposed going to an academy. Mm. And I was like, okay, whatever, and sign me up, you know. And um, little did I know, he was the Vanyana coach. And wow. at the time, it was Joseph Mkonza. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So at, he was the coach of Banyana. And so I had no idea because, I mean, you'd see Banyana on TV, but you just heard about them. I never really watched them, you know. Mm-hmm. So he was like, no, where's your parents, whatever. So I said, okay, my dad's over there. Just go talk to him. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, and then not long after, then I went, came over to Pretoria. Then um, I was at the Tux Academy at the High Performance Center in Pretoria. So that's where all, that that's where it all started. Is was, so that, I, was, was that with boys and girls at the uh, High Performance Center? No, so it was the girls. So it's like uh, an academy for girls. So all oh. girls. So they scouted girls all around South Africa, and um, so oh. 25 of us, 25 of the best, basically, were from every province, and um, yeah, so that's where it started, and I started there at grade 9, and then right up until matric. So I think that was honestly the best decision I've ever made, because um, I wouldn't be the person or the player I am today if I didn't go if I didn't leave Port Elizabeth, you know, because of the resources and um, the exposure that was needed at the time. So, yeah, I think that going to a boarding school was tough. It wasn't easy, but, um, I mean, it paid off. It, um, it literally... We can ask you this, the, uh, the HPC, the High Performance Center, right? Yeah. Is that specifically... Were you only 25 or were there other people from other sporting codes there? Yes. So, um, obviously, SAFA has the girls' academy there. But everyone else, all the other sporting codes are under tux. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, yeah. So, we were at the tux board high school. We went to school there. We loved on HBC. But we were under SAFA. So, we were still with the South African football association but we were just based at the hbc so oh. yeah so that's, that's, that's uh, yeah that was great i mean right now like now it's it's not what it used to be i think we were the best <laughs> look at you, look at you. Yeah. so <clears throat> so was robin with you there yes robin and i basically loved together we were inseparable the minute we met so when we both started in grade nine we were inseparable up until now we play in the same club uh, we're on the national team together so yes yeah, she's basically like my sister oh okay so are you gonna put a good word in there for me? all right don't worry i'll send her your cv <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. where is where's she from <clears throat> Uh, she's originally from East London, but she oh, grew was up I in as well. No, no, no. She grew up. She's originally from East London, but she grew up in Johannesburg. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Like, and then after, so you finished grade twelve there by um, the the high performance center, and then you went yes. to U Dubs. Why did you That's go to right. U Dubs? Um, after because. UW was the best um, university team, for, like right out of high school, at the, like that time. So. Better um, than Tux. Yes, so you better than Tux. In my opinion, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's news. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll 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 argue anyone who, who, say, who thinks differently. So it's okay. I'll stand, I'll stand I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. It's like, uh, I, would, I support Tottenham Hotspur, so I wouldn't know. Oh, geez. Okay. Then we don't have to talk anymore. <laughs> I support Tottenham, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know these things. Um, yeah, so, then that you, you dubs, yes, you, so then I would, did you go to America after that? 
So from high school, right out of high school, um, I went to UWC. I was there for a year. And then um, at the end of my first year, I got a call from one of the coaches and Cheryl Bortis, she was a coach at the academy. So she asked me if I'm interested in going overseas and you know, now play and study. And I was like, yes, sign me up. I want, because I want to, you know, I always thought I want to play professionally overseas or whatnot, but I didn't think that I was going to study or go to college in America. And when the opportunity came, I jumped at it. Um, I didn't even hesitate, you know. I And yeah, and then in 2000, 2014 uh, is when I left for America. And yeah, I was there until 2018. And yeah, it was... So you, so you did a whole undergrad? Yes, I have a BSc in... BSc? Uh, Yes. You. You. Yeah, you, you. Be marketing and sports management. Yo, yes, see. Yo, 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 yo. And then, yeah. and then, um, um, what, what school? What, what is a college name? I went to Menlo College in California. Menlo Oaks. Menlo Oaks. Yes. Yes, oh, that's in right. Cali, eh? California. Yep. Yeah, that was like, uh, <laughs> Did you study business as well? Yes, yeah, so it, it was a business school. So I did ah. sports management and then I did minor in marketing. Okay, okay. And so, so tell, me, tell me about AIB College. Yeah, so that was the first school I went to, and um, that was in Iowa. I was there for just a little, just under a year, and then the school folded because it went into a financial dip, and it just couldn't. Yeah, so from and then there, Menlo. I, then Menlo picked me up. Yes, then, yep. So I went from the Midwest, like. Uh, Literally, the cornfields and the country, and then I went to the big city, California. So you went from basically Orania to uh, Johannesburg. <laughs> basically, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Like Orania, because they that's that's Orania. There. That's like yeah. that's where Black Lives Don't Matter in that place. <laughs> <laughs> Black lives don't matter. Dude. It's like, how did you actually that year? You must have been struggling that year. But it's it seems to me you going to the HPC and learning to be by yourself at an early age helped you through going to Iowa. Fuck, I mean, there's nothing there. <laughs> one hundred percent, you nailed that one. Mm -hmm. Um. No, you're right, because, I mean, obviously it was a culture shock. I had to adjust very fast. And, yeah, that's definitely why I survived, basically, is because high school and boarding school prepared me for the rest of my life, basically. Because wow. I'm away from my family. There's not mom and dad that can just, you know, lend a hand every time. So, yeah, I had to fend for myself. I had to... You know, um, I had to grow up very fast because leaving at 14, obviously you're still young, you still, you know, you still want to be under mom and dad's roof. So yeah, that definitely groomed me for what to, for what was to come after high school. So yeah, I mean, it was tough, but I was fine because I knew what it, it took, you know, to, to use my, like use the adversity and, you know, make it. A positive so yeah that's definitely something that i will always hold close to me is that you know um, boarding school definitely groomed me for the rest of my life okay so i was gonna send my children because my son is at case and my daughter is at kingsmead um they girls schools and boys schools uh but yeah. now it seems to me that i need to send my daughter to actually a boarding school a boarding, boarding, because look how you turned out. But wait, tell me about <laughs> your achievements there at Menlo. Menlo yeah. Oaks. 
There's a lot, jeez. Yeah, yeah, so tell us. Okay, besides the fact that she went to Tupac's grave, because that's her achievement, the other achievements. <laughs> like, like, did you win a league? Did you win, did you win? Because the people don't know. Oh, like, so I tried to research, I did some research, but I want you to tell us. Um, what is your, what are you most proud of with, um, at Menlo Oaks? Um, I think what most, my biggest achievement was, is obviously going there. They didn't know much about Menlo. So when I got there, I think, oh, I know, I took the school you know, if I exposed the school to everyone. So everyone knew who Menlo was when I left, you know. And yeah. that to me was something, you can't buy that, you know, because um, obviously you want to plant the seed wherever you go. And I think I threw a whole bucket there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that was definitely the best four years of my life um, because they offered me, you know, a degree that I would never have gotten here, you know. I would have worked twice as hard if for a BSc over in South Africa than what I did in four years, you know. And yeah, that's what I was like. Sure. <laughs> yes. I studied and BSc and I failed. <laughs> So, yeah, and obviously the education and just the life skills and just the people around you because, you know, the lecturers, the professors, they were all about the students, you know. It wasn't, they weren't there for themselves. So that also helped a lot. But on the sports side, I think that was the best soccer I ever played, you know, um, just so because of... Wait, so, so, wait, just on the soccer side, in yeah. what league did you play? And who was the notable opponents that you played against? Okay, so we played in the NAIA, which is the second division. And um, like I said, the school, they weren't very, they weren't well known in California. So and when I got there in 2015, everyone was like, because I, at the time I was the only foreigner on the team. And... Mm. Um, so everyone was like, where'd they get this girl from South Africa? You know, there was a lot of questions and everyone was like, how did they get her here type of thing. And um, so, yeah, so when we started playing and um, the, I think our biggest, um, oh, there's so many. Okay, skip that. Yo, yeah, yo, leave that, yeah. leave that. There's other things that we can speak about, <laughs> like the 2016 Olympics. How was that, man? Yes, the day. Oh, yeah, because you went, you went to the Olympics, right? Yes, I did. I did, and that's definitely one of the biggest achievements in my career so far. Um, besides going to the World Cup now in 2019. How long have you been playing for Banyana Banyana now? Yeah, get it right. <laughs> um, so my first cap was when my first camp was in. 2011 so I was still very young I was still in, in grade 11 and then in matric it started becoming often you know it was becoming more and more and um yeah so I've been with the squad since matric so since 2012 but um I want to say the last five six years is when it's been where I've been more consistent and, you know, been a regular in the team. And um, so, yeah, I've, but I've always, when I started, I was always the younger one. I was always the third choice, you know, so I was always the, the little girl, the little kid in the team, you know. And um, so, yeah, I got my first big break was in um, 2017, 2018. And I think that's because now, obviously, I'm more matured and, you know, I've grown a lot over the years. So, yeah, I think, but I don't count the early days because, you know, I, I'm not the player I am now. And, um, you know, so things obviously changed. 
uh, my mentality changed, my skill level changed. So yeah, I, I only count the last six, seven years, not the years before that. <laughs> Like you're like only 24 now, so I don't understand why you're complaining. Um, um, goalkeepers only become like great at like 35, like Buffon and Schmeichel and Van der Sar. Yeah, yeah. They, not yeah. Wrong. <laughs> like well, 35 and above. That's when they at the peak, peak. I think goalkeepers. Yeah. Um, uh, so so tell us about the 2016 Olympics. Did you meet Usain Bolt? Um, I we saw him, but we didn't meet him. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there was a lot of athletes that we saw, but we didn't really meet because they obviously everyone's in their own zone, on their mission, you know. But um, no, that was honestly a great experience. I would love to go to another Olympics, you know, because. Um, but well, though. You Would will you go say? to another Olympics. I say you will yeah. go to another Olympics. Yes, yes, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's uh, on. That is, that's, on the card. that's in the cards. It's on the table. Like Banyana, Banyana is like the best in Africa, isn't it? Like oh, who's better than you? Huh? Of course, we're better. Yeah, I don't. There's no nobody better than you. I don't no. know. Uh, like but, you, but like, are you? Are you? So, which club do you play for? You and Robin. Who do you play for? So right now we were uh, JVW, so Janine van Weeks football club. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Does Bafana Bafana, I mean Banyana Banyana captain? Yes, that's right. Okay, okay, Janine. Yeah, she's yeah. cool. Yeah, you see, at least I met her. I never met you. I've only met two Banyana players, Porsche and Janine. Well, those, they are the, they are like, they are Banyana Banyana. So it's good yeah. you met them. <laughs> okay, yes, let's go. Let's go. 100 goals. Okay. Yes, uh, white girl. That's the defender. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want to meet Robin. I want to meet Robin. And I want to, <laughs> I want to meet Kaylin and Robin. So, who else, besides you and Robin, who else in from a, a colored community um, background is, is, yeah. is amongst? you guys there in, in on knocking on the door of Banya. And besides Desiree also. Is Desiree still going to be the coach? Well, as she is right now. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But for now, obviously, she's still our coach. And um, she's doing what she can, you know, under mm -hmm. the circumstances. But, yeah, no, we push through whatever comes our way, you know. We have to, yeah. we have to push through. There was a, there was a, uh, no, so I, I want to go back to the Olympics. Um, okay. uh, the, the, so did you, how was Brazil? Did you go to the favelas? Did you go we to did. the Gavin Day? Did you go to the yeah. Gavin Day in Brazil? Yes, we did. <laughs> Honestly, what you see on the movies is not exactly what it's like, you know, mm, but, mm. It's, it's really, it's, it, it was, yeah, it was hard to actually like take it all in because what you see on the TV is not really what you see in real life, you know, and, but what you see, it's exactly that, you know, people are struggling. It's not the most um, suitable for living and, you know, the environment obviously is not um, the greatest, but. What would you, would you say the crime in Rio is worse than the crime in Joburg, for instance? Oh, I think they're on the same scale, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, and then after uh, the, the, the Rio experience, um, you guys obviously didn't do as well as you wanted to. Yeah. But you played against, what is that? Is it Korea? What is that red team? Um, the red team? I think yeah, it's it China. 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 Yes. Yeah, hey, 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 h
and then um so last second last question tell me about um your experience at the world cup because that's a dream for everybody oh 100% that was okay besides the olympics this was honestly one of my i they, i can't even put that experience into words because it was just mind blowing it was so overwhelming but so like a good overwhelming you know can i just say something when the yeah. women's world cup was on it was also the african nations cup and i think it was the other european cup whatever and yes. i never watched yes i never watched those games i watched your games and i watched all the <laughs> women's world cup games and i can tell you all my close friends we didn't watch those african nations cup in European yeah. championship nonsense. We watched the World Cup for women because the soccer, the excitement, everything was just so quiet. That's us as a fan. How did you feel as a player? Who? It <clears throat> honestly, it was so like the excitement, the you know, the adrenaline was just something else. Like, yes, we've played in the Afcon, we've played Nigeria, which are it's really big games, but at the World Cup, it's a different level. Like. You have to really be at your best every second of the game, and honestly, the the way they treated us, the professionalism, the you know the the just the exposure to what we are supposed to you know experience in our own countries, we you know, so it was all new. It was overwhelming, like I said, but so good that you know we want to go back because we have so much more to give you know it was it was it was a crazy experience because even though we were at in the like the big it was i mean the world cup is literally the biggest stage you'll ever play on and for us it was a dream come true and for it to happen um obviously we want to go again but you know the next four years you know we never know what might what might happen you know because you know I think if any time this was the time that we had to go to the World Cup because we fought so hard over the years, you know, we've year in year out we were fighting to go to the World Cup and it just didn't happen, you know. So I think 2019 was definitely our year, and I think a lot of countries saw who South Africa was because ah, it, yeah. even though like we always we mention about the you know the professional leagues and the money and the funding. We don't have what they have, but when it came to the field, that didn't matter. They knew who we were because of how we played, you know. And I think a lot. I think we we caught a lot of people, you know, um, by surprise. So I think if we go again, we'll definitely do much better because now we know what we're going up against, you know. So yes, yeah, so that that's definitely something that we would have an advantage on is you know knowing what we will expect so obviously because we we knew going into the world cup we knew we were gonna play you know professionals girls that we look up to because they are celebrities in other countries you know and um so now Marta. Marta. Exactly. Yeah, so <laughs> if we go again we know what we what we need to do so um, yeah, I hope one day, I hope in the next four years we qualify again because that is something that, you know, you can't buy that experience and I will forever be grateful for, you know, in my career or if it just to even go to the World Cup and to, you know, reach that stage in my life, you know, so. Do you yeah. have an agent? At the moment, no. Please, man, get an agent. Phone's taken for it. He's an agent. Phone me to okay. phone. <laughs> I'm going to tell Stanton to phone you. Because okay. the reason why I'm asking is, surely, surely you can go play overseas. Surely. Yeah, um, I mean, and, I, that's obviously my next goal is obviously play, wanting to play overseas and play professionally. But, I mean, it's just never happened yet. And um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to phone Glenn now. After this call, 
I'm going to phone Glenn and I'm going to ask Glenn why is Kalen Swart not playing in the MLS, MLS, or MLS, or at least the, the Belgium or the Dutch league? Why? Yeah, I mean, my, I have a resume to back up. I mean, yes. I, so it's not, I mean, if I knew, okay, if I was just playing locally, going overseas is not something you can look forward to but I mean I've, I have a resume to show for it so I mean I would love to play overseas play professionally but uh, you know if it happens it happens if it doesn't I'll it just... will happen it will no 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 <laughs> I can guarantee you I can guarantee you yeah. it will happen it will happen soon like after COVID-19 coronavirus it will happen so if yes, coronavirus definitely. end in November then you're gonna go if coronavirus hap happened to end in 2021 December, then you're gonna have to go after there. Then, then, then I'll yes. go after. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> what I'll happened? Oh. Right. Sorry about that. Last, last question. Not actually a question. I can't see you. I can't see your video anymore. You can't see my video. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay. So, um. You, you have achieved so much and it seems to me that there's so much more that you want to achieve, right? Yeah. And, and, and so bring it back to the start. Um, Galvindale, it's, they have these something in the water, something in the salt, something. It's like morals, family support, um, uh, uh, drive and ambition. Discipline. Discipline. So, and discipline, thank you. Hard work and discipline. So I was yeah. gonna get to that. Hard work and discipline. So um, all those things is quite common to all the people that I know personally and that are from Galvindale. Even like Garnet, like Garth, all the, I, it's nice to hang out with guys from Galvindale, girls and guys from, it's nice to hang out with them because you feel yeah. that you're part of something bigger. Of course, and we it's we are all a family. We everyone's like family. We don't say friends. You like say this is my brother, my sister. But even no. though we friends, they feel mm -hmm. like family, and that's the best part of it, you know. So now, for the people out there from Galvindale, from El Dorado Park, from uh, Mitchell's Plain that's watching this, um, what would you say to them? Because uh, I hate people asking me this question because I don't have the answer to this question. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, my answer is always uh, luck plays a big role, but you create your own luck by working hard at the talent that you have. Yeah. So you have, you have to have some sort of talent. You have to work hard with that talent and then maybe luck will come your way. And, and that's the way it is right now. Um, considering what's happening in South Africa right now, considering yeah. COVID-19, um, the political situation, uh, uh, what would you tell an uh, aspiring footballer or cricketer or sports person from Galvindale or Elders? Yeah. Uh, what should they well, look out to do? Well, first of all, I tell them, you know, never forget where you come from. You know, always, you know, don't forget who got you to where you are. You know, respect is a big deal. You know, respect your parents, your guardians, the people who are taking care of you or providing for you. Because when you get to the top, it's, it's very lonely. So you're always going to need the people who started, you know, who got you to where you are. Um, and also never give up. I mean, if... If you have a talent, you know, use it, use it to your advantage because um, that's what will get you out of your environment. And, um, you know, don't always look to the next person who has everything and say, oh, I want that and think it's going to be easy. You know, you got to work hard. Um, you got to push yourself, obviously, because no one else is going to do it for you. So, um, yeah, and I just think, don't become complacent, you know, just don't be complacent in your environment or just because you can use your, what you, how you grew up can be an advantage and you don't have to use it as a disadvantage, you know, because you can say, oh, this is where I came from. 
So this is where I'm going. I'm not going to stay in this place forever because it's not nice, you know, in simple terms. It's not a nice place to be in. So I don't want my kids to be in this position or I don't want my family to be in this position. So it's all, it always comes back to, you know, having the strong mentality and the discipline, obviously, to, um, to cut out all the bad things that are happening, like, you know, the drugs, alcohol, the crime, and, you know, just a bad crowd of friends and all of those things play a part. So I would just say, don't give up keep pushing for, you know, for the best and, um, yeah, just have fun, have fun doing it, you know, because when the fun is gone, then what's left, you know? So, and also go after what you're passionate about because, um, obviously with passion comes hard work and discipline and, um, yeah, just, you know, be yourself. Don't let anyone tell you who you are. Ah, that's the one. That is the one. So, um, guys, thank you so much, uh, Kaylin Kristen Schwartz. I just want to say that she said a couple of important things. One is don't ever forget where you come from. Two, show some respect to your people. Three, drive your passion, love your passion, and go for it. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. Um, work hard, uh, lots of hard, and most importantly, enjoy yourself. Thanks, Kaylin. Thank you for sharing your story with us. It's truly refreshing and it breaks barriers when it comes to women in sport. All the best for the future. Good luck. Audio Jungle.